Good morning. Good morning. So, yes, yes, good to see everybody here today. The sun's shining, we just can't see it, which is a blessing and a half and much needed rain. Uh, on the back of the bulletin um, are some announcements. Um, I do want to explain a little bit the two inserts that you have in your bulletins. Uh, one insert is the summer praise nights, so hang that on the fridge, but there'll be a new one next week. Um, Steve Sheffy had to move to July 22nd. So there is a revision, so uh, you can keep track of it until July. 22nd. Um, also on um, in your inserts there is um, a special opportunity that we have to love up a member of our congregation. Uh, we will be painting uh, Diane Kleinfelter's house next Friday and Saturday. So you'll see there a form if you would fill that out that you're willing to help paint, willing to help maybe serve a meal, willing to bake a pan of brownies either day, uh, whatever in whatever way you're willing to help uh, just drop that in the plate if you like and we will take it from there. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Yeah, announce the meeting right after. Oh, yes. Um, right after the service today, um, there are a few cookies on the uh, lounge there in the window. Um, come back in here if you don't mind, and um, we will have a brief maybe 15-minute meeting on the repairs of the steeple what needs to be done going forward. So if you could come back and give your input, and everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome to come back in for that. We'd like to have you. Yes, Michelle. We had a wonderful conference that Pastor Mike and I attended Monday and Tuesday and uh, Sunday afternoon. And uh, there were close to a thousand people again, representing all the churches in our Northern conferences up here. And um, after 15 years of being in St. Charles, next year they're moving it to Schaumburg. So that'll be closer for all of those uh, churches in by Chicago, which uh, <laughs> it's a little different for us out here in the boonies. Um, we we uh, went through some many important items, um, and I will be reporting on that later on. Um, we're always, the church is always on top of important stuff, and always have a voice in, in uh, the feelings that, that, and the beliefs reflected from the Methodist Church. And I'm so proud to be a part of, of that decision making, um, very important things are happening, um, and I'll share those later. Um, also, I want to announce that next Saturday, for those of you who aren't going to be painting, come to our garden walks. We have been working very, very hard. I see Chris Weissner here. I, I see um, uh, Jeannie's here, Kip, Elbert, Kip and Joan Elbert, their garden um, up at uh, Jan Wilhelm's house and then our place, and Lori and Daryl Stitzel out in the country, and also the Kleinfelders out at Lake Carroll are all going to be on the garden walk, and this will be money going to Young Life that Rich Grosinger has been supporting for all the high school kids, and they've had wonderful crowds that he is um, doing. He is, he's, he's the guy. Man, he is the guy. And Jeannie says this is her vision that to help raise money for, for that group. And they are doing so well. Um, please come out and support us. We've been really working hard to show off our gardens. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Are there any other announcements? Any other that we're missing? Okay, let's take a moment, if you would, and uh, just quiet our minds. You know, we are a, a little bit of a hyper uh, society nowadays. So let's take a moment and quiet our minds, listen to the music, get in tune with God and where he wants to speak to you today.
Thank you, ladies. If you would please stand for opening hymn number 28, Holy God, we praise thy name. Holy God, we praise thy name, Lord of all, we bow before thee, all on earth by scepter claim, all in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Hark the loud celestial hymn, angel choirs above are raising, cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising. Fill the heavens with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Lo, the apostolic train. Join thy sacred name to hallow. Prophets swell the glad refrain, and the white robe martyrs follow, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, in three we name Thee, while in essence only one, undivided God we claim Thee, and adoring bend the knee while we sing our praise to thee. Our dear Heavenly Father, help us this morning, Lord, to not only bend our knees and our minds, but also, Lord, to bend our hearts. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves as we come into your presence here in your house. And Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit would come and move amongst us, Lord, that uh, your spirit, Lord, would indwell each one of us as Pastor Mike delivers your words. I pray, Lord, for your blessing on him as uh, your servant, Lord, as he preaches and ministers to your people. In your son's name we pray. Amen. If the kids want to come up, we'll have the children's time. Come on, Jace, run, 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 run. You got it, you got it, huh? Yes, there you go, have a seat, bud. How are you guys? Good, you enjoying your summer break? One of us is on summer break, isn't she? Yes, you having fun, are you, Kylie? Good, good, what do you have for me, bud? Oh, what's that? Bye. Dinosaur, dinosaur, look at that, Camden. So, look, you do, you want to hold it? There you go. And what is this, Jace? Dinosaur. Another dinosaur. Do you have another one in there? Is that it? That's it? We're fresh out of dinosaurs, are we? Yeah. Oh. I got my bugs away. Oh, you have your bugs back there? 
Yeah. Are they alive? Yeah. Oh, they're alive. Okay, something we'll have to talk about after church. So. Oh, sure, sure. So, Jace, what, do you like your dinosaurs? Yeah. What do, what do you do with them? I play with them at home. You play with them at home. What do you do with your dinosaurs, Camden? Because you have the same dinosaur, don't you? But not my Disney one. Now, now what? My Disney one is not the same. Oh, it's not the same now? He has a squishy dinosaur. Ooh, a squishy dinosaur. Yes, yes. Squishy you, dinosaur. That's funny, isn't it, Jace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, squishy dinosaur. Yes. So. The one on the desk? Oh, yes. The one on the desk? Stretches. It stretches. Very nice. So, um, do you think, did God create dinosaurs? Yes. Well, you know what? They're in the Bible. Did you know that? Dinosaurs are actually in the Bible, maybe. Did you know that, Kylie? No. In um, Job, I, I can't say it's, it's like Leviathan or something like that, and that may have been back in the day a dinosaur because we don't have the Leviathan today, but the, the writer of Job talks about, you want to sit on my lap? Are you okay there? Okay, okay. so anyway, do, what else is in the Bible? What else is in the Bible? Mm, my dinosaur. Your dinosaur is in the Bible? What else is in the Bible? Jesus. Jesus, what else is in the Bible? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. What else? God. God, yes. What else? Jesus. Jesus, yes. We have a lot of stuff in the Bible, don't we? And what do we, this is kind of hard, what do we call the Bible? The Word of? God. Word of God. Very, very good. And do you think that the Word of God, do you think that the Bible's, um, what do I want to say? Do you think it's important today? like it was thousands of years ago, or is it not important? It is. It is. Why do you say that, dear? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yes. And so do you guys, I hope, does somebody read the Bible to you every day? Does someone read the Bible to you? Do you, do you have a children's Bible? No. You don't have, do you have a children's Bible? No, no. We need to get you guys some children's Bibles, don't we? So you guys can read about Jesus, huh? And dinosaurs. Would you like to read about dinosaurs in the Bible? No. Are they scary? Yeah. Oh, I just got the stink eye there. I just got the stink eye. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So we'll get you some children's Bible, and maybe we can read from up here a Bible story. Wouldn't that be fun someday? And you know where else you're going to hear about Jesus and God's word? Where else? Starts with a B and ends in an S. Vacation Bible School. So you guys have to come back or come to Vacation Bible School in July, okay? So tell Mommy, you tell Mommy and Daddy, all right, Jace? You tell Mommy and Daddy that back by the office, there's sign-up forms, okay, for Vacation Bible School. You following me? Yes, you following me, Camden? Vacation Bible School, huh? Oh, you already have, are you guys already signed up? No. Okay, well, we'll get you signed up. And you too, Jace. So VBS is fun, isn't it? And we're going to learn all about stuff in there, okay, at BBS. So thank you, JC, for sharing your dinosaurs with us. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so can you guys say a prayer with me? Yeah. Okay, say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For your word. For your word. Thank you. And thank you. For all the creation. For all creation. Even the dinosaurs. Even the dinosaurs. Amen. Amen. So, Mr. Camden, you got your, oh, you take that. And, oh, hey, Kylie, you want this for next week? I'll trade you a dinosaur for a bag. That's a good deal. Don't forget your treat. Don't forget your treat, bud. Got it? Thank you. Well, Donna is going to share our scripture with us today. In this scripture are two images of the present day heaven. So where our saints are today that have passed from this life to the next, uh, this first scripture will give us an uh, image, and I like to picture the Olympic Stadium in this first image. 
that our uh, witnesses are all in the stands, the saints who've gone before us. The second one talks about saints that have been martyred for their faith under an altar. Now, we think about an altar uh, that is this size, but my guess is that the altar in the present day heaven paradise is much larger. Because if you think about tens of thousands, even millions of angels and people, saints praising God, for them to see the most holy place, the altar, it's going to be a large, so I think about more like a, if there was a huge rock concert, that there would be a huge stadium, a huge altar that everyone could see. And so it has two images, and our scripture today deals with two questions. Can the saints who've gone before us see us, see what's going on? And the second question is, are there tears shed in the present day heaven or in paradise? Good morning. Uh, the first scripture today is found, found in Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 4. If you want to follow along in your pew Bible, it's page 1908. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set, for, set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. The second reading is uh, Revelations 6, 9 through 11 on page 1948. Verse 9, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed, just as they had been. Thank you, Donna. So our first image of heaven, they are referred to as a great cloud of witnesses, all the saints who've gone before us. So this starts with chapter 11, actually, in Hebrews. We call chapter 11 the Hall of Faith where chapter 11, the writer is naming all the faithful people who have come before, naming Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Enoch and Isaac and Jacob and Rebecca and all these faithful people are being named in chapter 11. And chapter 12 starts with the word therefore. And that word is an important word because what it does is it connects chapter 11, all the faithful people, to what's going to be said in chapter 12. And it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and so one, for those saints who've gone before us, now I picture if the scriptures had been written today, that our loved ones who have been faithful, who had faith in God and had hope in this Christ that, that came, their names would also be lit, written in Hebrews chapter 11. And would say, therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses, for them to be witnesses, they have to see what's happening here on earth. A witness sees what happens. And so it says that we have this great cloud of witnesses and that we are to run the race with perseverance that has been set out for us. So automatically running the race, I picture an Olympic stadium. And that all of us are now on this race track of life. And we are running the race. And we have this cloud of witnesses who are cheering us on. And so I picture that they have stepped off the racetrack of life. They have walked up into the stands. Now picture just around you now, 
the people we love, and all the saints who've gone before us, and even though we can't see them, I believe that they are in those stands with their fists in the air. And they are cheering us on. They now know all truth. They know all the secrets to life. And they are telling us to run the race with perseverance, to throw off everything that hinders us, the sin that so easily entangles. And so what is it that hinders us from winning or experiencing the abundant life? What is it that hinders us that they're telling us to throw off. And I think often it is a sense of, uh, if I think about what's most important today to a life of joy and happiness, it is relationships. What brings real hope and brings fulfillment in this life is not the material things of this world. It is our connection to the people around us. And so when they say, throw off everything that so easily hinders us from running this race, I believe they're telling us to throw off things like anger, throw off animosity, throw off jealousy, throw off self-centeredness, get rid of those things. The saints who've gone before us know that the secret of life is to throw off those things. And it says we are to keep our eyes focused on the author and perfecter of our faith. Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is the one as he indwells in us through his Holy Spirit. He's the one that gives us faith. And when we talk about perfecter, it is the Holy Spirit of God that perfects us, helps us to be more holy, helps us to live a life that is more gentle, that is kind. When we've thrown off those things that hinder us, the Holy Spirit empowers us to have relationships that are full and meaningful. And so here we are, we're on the racetrack of life, and right now there's a crowd of witnesses, all those who've gone before us, that can see us in everything that's happening. My father died at a young age. He was 50. I was uh, newly married about two years, or four years when he died. Um, I had a couple brothers that uh, weren't married yet, and... uh, My mom, one of the things she grieved about when my dad died was she said, you know, he'll never see your brothers get married. He'll never see your, all of you have grandkids. He'll never see the grandkids graduate and get married. And mom was thinking about all these things in life that she was going to miss doing with my dad, but she thought he was also going to miss them. Where in reality, from this scripture, my dad had a front row seat at all of those things and sees everything that's going on in our lives and has not missed a single thing. And this is a great truth that I believe about our loved ones who've gone before us is they can see everything that's happening. Now the question is, do they have tears? Do they shed tears in the present day heaven? And so as we think about this, let's take a look at our second scripture, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. And so uh, we have in this image, John, uh, the disciple John, who wrote the book of Revelation, he was, uh, all the other disciples were martyred for their faith, they were killed. The way that John was martyred, he was put on an island called Patmos, and he was put there all by himself secluded on this island, and it was then Jesus Christ came and appeared to him and took him into heaven so he could experience what is happening today and what was going to happen. And so it uses this imagery. In verse 9, it says, when he opened the fifth seal, the Lamb of God. And so I picture a scroll and how this scroll is rolled up and It used to be people would use wax seals to seal an envelope. And it would, one, that seal would represent who it was from, but also that it had not been opened. And so here, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, has a a scroll that he's unrolling. And as he unrolls it, he's revealing more to John about what is to come and what is happening. 
And it says the fifth seal's broken. So already Jesus has unrolled the scroll and four seals have been broken already. And now he unrolls it a little bit farther and the fifth seal is broken. And it says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw the, under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. And so there are people that have been martyred and killed for their faith. And those people that have been martyred and killed for their faith hold a special place in God's heart because of what they suffered for the faith. So if we picture this place where there's going to be tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and even millions of people and angels praising God, there's going to be this altar that's gigantic. And an altar in our church is the place where we put the most holy things. We have the scriptures on our altar. When we have the elements consecrated for communion, we put those elements on the altar. And a place of the altar is a place of holiness where the most holy things are placed. And here, the people that are martyred for their faith are treated as God as some of the most holy things. So John sees under this large altar these martyrs who have been killed for their faith, and these martyrs cry out. They say, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? And so what that tells me is for the martyrs to know that justice has not been done, they can see what's going on here on the earth. And so they are wondering, because they have been killed, Lord, when are you going to bring the people to justice that killed us? When are things going to be made right? And God tells him the time is not yet. There are still more that are going to lose their lives. But one day I will make things right. So this scripture also points to the truth that they can see us. Now, if we flip over one page to Revelation chapter 7, and I'm going to be looking at page 1950 in your pew Bibles, I'm going to start with verse 13. Chapter 7, verse 13. And then one of the elders said, these in the white robes, so those under the altar were given white robes. He said, these in the white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And I answered, sir, you know. And he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And so what this tells me is for God to be able to wipe away the tears from their eyes, that there will be tears in heaven. So right now what I can picture is those martyrs are weeping because justice hasn't been done. I believe when our loved ones in the present day heaven and paradise see things that happen to us, it would be natural for them to weep. That they would be sorrowful and it's because of love. That they love us and they care about us. So when something tragic or and difficult in, is in my life, I believe my dad weeps. But God is there, and God wipes away the tear from their eyes. Now, this will change one day, and when it changes, will come with the second coming of Jesus Christ. So if we look at Revelation chapter 21, starting with verse 1, Revelation 21, starting with verse 1, it's on page 1966, this scripture talks about the truth of Jesus Christ one day descending from heaven and coming down to earth. And when he does, he's going to renew this whole earth and he's going to renew the heavens, the stars, the sky, everything that we see. And the, this current earth and current heavens will pass away and everything will be renewed. And when that happens, there'll be no more tears after that time. So let me share this scripture from Revelation 21. And the crucial point is the second coming of Christ. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. 
I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And now the next sentence is a new thing that's been added. There will be no more death or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And so this place of being, having God wipe away the tears happens throughout Scripture, but this is the first place after the second coming of Christ when he says there'll be no more crying. So at that point, when Christ comes again, our tears will be wiped away, and from that point on, for the rest of time, there'll be no more crying after that point. There will be no more tears after that point. So today, in this present-day heaven, I believe there are tears, but those tears don't originate from heaven. They don't originate from anything that's happening in heaven. We're, what causes those tears is things that are happening here on earth that our loved ones can see. And it would be natural that they would grieve with us, that they would cry with us when we are going through difficult times and through affliction. But one day, when Christ comes again, that will all be changed. And that no more will people go through difficult times or affliction. And that's why at that point there'll be no more tears because there'll be no more crying. And so today, the image I want to leave you with is that of our loved ones who can see us. That even though we can't see them, if we look up and imagine the people you love who've gone before you are right now in those stands. They know the true secret to life is found in Jesus Christ. They know that the hindrance to that is our own self-centeredness and things. And they know that if we can throw those things aside and keep our eyes focused on Christ, that each one of us will experience the abundant life today and forevermore. And they right now have their fist in the air and they are cheering each one of us on. Run. Run, run that race with perseverance, run. Don't give up, run. And whatever you're facing today, whatever is going on in your life, they are cheering us on, run. Amen. And as they can see what's going on here on earth, um, I've thought before with my mom and dad who are praising and worshiping God in person. So I, how about if we all have someone on our hearts, I'm sure, that has gone on before us, why don't we raise our voices together with them in hymn number 570, the sweet by and by, and just imagine as you're singing this to your God, to your Savior, that they are joining in the same hymn with us. Number 570, the sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. 
to our bountiful Father above. We will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days and the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore and won't that be a glorious day when yeah. we meet those that have gone on and um, I firmly believe that we will know uh, who they are. They might not have bodies like we have today, but we are going to know our loved ones. And I'm looking forward to that day. So this is a time where we get to share where God has worked in our lives this week, where we have concerns, our joys, concerns. Where have you seen God this week? Did you have a God incident? Don't everybody jump at the chance now. Come on. So hold back. So I had one um, I shared with Pastor Mike on the way out to Lake Carroll that um, might see. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in God incidences. And uh, so I took our dog and uh, walked to the bank Saturday morning, went over a block, walked down. And as I'm walking down there, um, Ashley and Brian Ignato were doing yard work and they, they come here and they go, oh, we have a question for you. Sure. What's that? Well, we just bought a new couch. We want to get rid of the old one. Do you have anyone that needs a couch? I said, well, I know this man in Rockford does uh, the homeless vets. We've, we've had pickup places here, you know, twice to pick up furniture. And I said, um, so let me give him a call. So I put him on speakerphone. Dennis, you know, I'm standing here. We got this couch to get rid of. I know that you're in town sometime getting another household loaded up because they donated an entire household from their mother's house. And so can you swing by and pick up a couch? Well, yeah. He goes, I'm here. I'm like, okay, Dennis. Yeah, I know you're there, but um, I have this couch I need you to look at. I'm here. And Ashley goes, He's here. I'm like, what are you doing, Dennis? He rolled up with a wag, with a trailer, and he's from Rockford. I'm like, what are you doing on this? I never told him what street I was even on. I, and Ashley goes, he's here. He's right there. I'm like, oh. so we walk out in the street and talk to Dennis. I'm, what are the chances of that? At that moment, him being in <laughs> Shannon with a trailer from Rockford on that street. And uh -huh. so I said, okay, I'm going to get out of the middle of this. You guys can work it out. And he went and looked at the couch. He'll be back to pick it up next week. So I thought, that's a God incident. I didn't even tell him I was on Lynn Street. He just rolled up and he said, they're going, I'm here. Okay. Anybody else have a God incident today? Or in the past week, months, maybe you didn't share a month or two ago. You want to, it's on your heart today. Okay. So on the back of your bulletin, you will see prayer requests, um, an update there. Um, Fred Reddy's, I included his address, Fred and Julie Reddy's. Um, Fred has moved to a uh, rehab facility in Naperville. So if you can drop him a card here and there, I'm sure he would appreciate the encouragement and to let them know that we have not forgotten them. Uh, Sally is having um, a couple of procedures this week. On the 12th, she's having a stent put in uh, with a probe uh, for the kidney that, for the cancer that's inside her kidney. And then on the 13th, she will be having an ablation to uh, zap that little thing and get rid of it. So please remember Sally this week on the 12th and 13th. Uh, Carl Thorne is Alan Ruthidi's uh, nephew who has ALS. Uh, we ask for spiritual healing for Carl. Uh, Doug Olson had surgery this past week, doing great, isn't that something? So it all worked like clockwork, he's doing wonderful. Uh, Debbie Gassman's niece, Kimberly, um, she's a young mother, she's only 35, and she's going through cancer, and uh, had her first chemo treatment, did not handle it well, so Debbie would like us to remember Kimberly as she continues to have her chemo treatments. Uh, John Pale, Johnny Pale is doing wonderful. We've been praying for John, that's Liv and Anthony's dad, and uh, he has brain cancer and lung cancer. Brain, the brain tumor is shrinking. Uh, there's no new cancer in his body. Uh, his lungs are completely clear. His pulse ox 100%. Uh, he's just doing very, very well. So we're going to continue to pray for John and lift him up that this uh, healing role that he is on, that the good Lord will continue that for John. Um, we also have Roger Gassman. He had a surgery in Rockford this week for a couple of discs and a uh, pinched uh, nerve. 
he got home the same day, 20 minute surgery and he's home the same day. So go figure. Roger's doing well, but would like continued prayer. And um, our dear, sweet Harry Scriver learned uh, today or last night that his, his wife, or start over, his sister, Ruth Borth, has passed. So Harry's sister has passed, Ruth Borth. So if we would please remember Harry and his family. Any others that we would like? Lift? Oh, yes, ma'am. Carol, Carol Larson is still struggling with pain from her recent back surgery. Just keep her in your prayers. Any others that you would like to lift up? Can I turn around here? Any others on your hearts? No? Okay. We will go ahead and lift up these people to, to God and ask for healing and for comfort. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we uh, thank you for all the joys that you give us, the, the joy of God incidences and how we see you at work in nature and in people around us, Lord, and for just the uh, joy that you give us as we interact with each other. And Lord, I lift up those that were mentioned here today in the prayer requests. And Lord, we ask for prayer also for Carol Larson as we add her to our list of those that we're concerned about. And Lord, I know that there were some that were kept silent for whatever reason, and that's okay too, God, because you see us. You see our hearts, you see our minds, our thoughts, Lord, and we give you those people that are on our hearts. Lord, we ask for physical healing for some of these listed here. And Lord, when physical healing is not to be, we ask for spiritual healing that you would show up in their lives, that you would tenderly knock at the door of their hearts and that they would open that door for you to step in. Lord, I ask for your blessings and your comfort and your peace. All of these things, Lord, we lift up in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, our... our um, Offering scripture today comes from Galatians 6.10, and it says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And the teaching behind this is that as believers, as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are obligated on a, a bigger level here to uh, care for those for other people, that we are obligated to look out for others. And we have a certain, uh, what, do I, what do I wanna call that? I said it in the first service. A social responsibility, that word, those words, yes. That we are socially responsible for those less fortunate. And so with our tithes and offerings, as we uh, pay, plates pass, whatever, um, just ask that God direct you in a way that our tithes, our offerings can best used to uh, further his kingdom in this world, and that those who are less fortunate would be blessed by what we give and the prayers that we lift up for them. So if our ushers would please come forward, we'll receive this morning's tithes and offerings.
If you would please stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures hear me low. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, you just bless us beyond words, Lord, with all of the wonderful things in life for us to enjoy. And Lord, we come to you humbly, and we ask for your blessing on these tithes, these gifts, Lord, that we've given back to you. And I ask, Lord, that you would not only bless the gift, but also the giver, that we would receive joy by giving back, Lord, and by helping others in need. Lord, I ask your blessing on these offerings today. Amen. If you would please turn to our last hymn, number 555, when we all get to heaven. And I want us to sing it like it's going to be a glorious place. It's good. Thank you, Janice. Amen. My one parishioner says amen. Yeah, the rest of you guys are Pastor Mike's. I have one. So that a girl. And, and that's because Janice always tells me, you're not my pastor. You're my husband. So she <laughs> refers to Dawn as her pastor. Yes. <laughs> Number 555, when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Following our blessing and our go in peace song, if you would like to stay for about 15 minutes, I'm going to show some pictures of the current state of our steeple, talk about the maintenance that needs to be done on it. And so we want to share this with you so everyone hears firsthand because it'll be a relatively expensive project 
for us to do the repairs that are needed on our steeple. But I want you to hear firsthand, and then early July, we should have estimates on what the cost will be, and we'll vote as a congregation in the early part of July, between the 4th and 15th probably, on uh, what we'll do to proceed from here. May the grace of our Lord and Savior be with each one of you in this week and all that you do. May God's love flow into you and through you to those around you. And may through the communion of the Holy Spirit, may we have a clear sense of those saints who are cheering us on as we persevere in the race before us. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. No, he will guide you in all you do. If you want to grab a cookie, feel free to do that. And then come on back in. It'll take me a couple minutes to set up.